Welcome to the F1 Slot channel and today I'm talking about how finished Red Bull are, particularly with their options for future drivers, with Perez being washed and the rest of their drivers being mediocre. However, in order to know how Red Bull have found themselves in this situation, we need to go back to the 2019 F1 season. 2019 started off with Ricardo not wanting to be Verstappen's b so he left for Renault. Red Bull consequently had a missing driver and had to snatch someone from Toro Rosso and Gasly had done decently in 2018 whilst driving in the midfield so it seemed like a harmless decision to sign him for the 2019 season. But you probably know that did not go very well. Gasly was off the pace and wasn't shy to throw his car into a wall and allegedly he wasn't very soft spoken with Adrian Newey. In qualifying his average deficit to Verstappen was plus 0.529 seconds off so now Red Bull were screwed as they needed a replacement and their options were Albon or Kvyat, with both of them performing rather evenly and even though they were pretty even, Red Bull still told Kvyat to go f*** himself and decided to sign the rookie driver Albon instead. Overall, Albon performed slightly better than Gasly. The qualifying gap on average was plus 0.433 seconds off. A slight improvement and he wasn't damaging his car as much, but his deficit to Verstappen was still similar, especially in race pace. Ultimately, most of the time Gasly and Albon, even if they qualified in a ship position, would end up in the huge gap between the three front running teams and the midfield. However, if this gap was to close, this sure would expose Albon, which definitely isn't me foreshadowing something. Anyway, I believe the reason Albon kept his seat for 2020 was down to a few factors. One was that he wasn't binning his car consistently, and another was that he was a rookie, so it seemed more impressive what he was doing. Also, maybe that time in Japan where he equaled Verstappen's qualifying time and almost scored a podium in Brazil. Retrospectively, looking back at Albon's stint at Red Bull, Japan was the closest he would ever get to out qualifying Verstappen, which leads us on to the 2020 season. 2020 started off with Albon having a similar deficit to Verstappen. However, the midfield had started catching up and this would cause him to qualify and finish further back than expected. Now, the first race of this season was quite interesting for Albon as it was his only ever chance of winning a race. But in the end, he got terrorised by Hamilton when trying to overtake him, ruining his race. Some people like to say that this was the root cause to his struggles at Red Bull in 2020, but I personally think that is cap. Even if he won this race, he would have still reeked for the rest of the season. We saw this with um, Ricardo in 2021 when he won in Monza. Following that race, we did not see a sudden uptick in performance from Ricardo. In fact, his 2022 season was even worse than his 2021 season. By the second race, which was still in Austria, Albon had already started his trend of qualifying in the midfield and then spending all of his race battling with it as well. Now I'm not going to walk through every single weekend of the season because that would be too long and I need to finish this video before the Hungarian Grand Prix, so I will tell you now, the rest of the 2020 season was pretty much Albon battling with the front of the midfield whilst Verstappen was consistently finishing on the podium. In 2020 Albon's average qualifying deficit was about the same with it being plus 0.482 seconds off. Another theme of the 2020 season was Perez being sacked for a wash Sebastian Vettel and he was currently jobless and performing well. And this was um, um, emphasised further when in Sakir Jack Aitken made a silly little spin which completely changed the course of history as it f***ed over both Mercedes forcing them to fumble their pit stops and led to to Perez winning the race which also probably convinced Red Bull to give him a seat. So now we have finally reached the part of the video where we stand the Perez which I need to be very careful with as Perez fans like calling you racist if you criticise him as I have found out myself. 2021 is now a very infamous season with everyone and the media not really giving a fuck about what Perez was up to. Overall, Perez was about the same as Albon pace deficit wise, with his average qualifying gap being um, plus 0.437 seconds off. Unlike Albon, however, he actually managed to out qualify Verstappen and Imola, but that was the only time, so there was still a large skill gap, and the only race where Perez was equal to Verstappen was Baku, but that is still more races than Albon or Gasly ever was. He just managed to finish fourth in the championship standings which also was better than Albon, but we do need to bear in mind that the RB16B was a fast car. Also, he was a huge factor in helping Verstappen win in Abu Dhabi, which must have impressed Red Bull despite his large deficit to Verstappen. Anyway, it's time to start talking about ground effect era Perez. No! Overall, 2022 was probably Perez's most decent year at Red Bull. It wasn't amazing, but it was respectable, where he earned one win at Singapore and another in Monaco through dubious tactics. 
Also, Perez's qualifying gap to Verstappen was the smallest it had been at Red Bull since Ricardo leaving, with it being plus 0.310 seconds off. A reason for this shorter gap to Verstappen was it took Max a while to adapt to the heavy and understeery vehicles in this era of cars, and additionally, this style suited Perez more. There were still a few qualifying blunders from Perez, like in Canada, but yeah, solid season for Perez, but that wouldn't last for long. Twenty twenty three started with the media trying to gas up an impending title fight between Perez and Verstappen, but we all knew deep down that that was never going to materialise because Verstappen is him and Perez isn't. Also, Baku ended up being Perez's last win to date and probably his last ever win if we are being honest. Max also expressed following this race that it deeply pissed him off losing to Perez, and whatever he did to never let this happen again clearly worked, as since Baku, Perez is yet to outqualify Verstappen or beat him in a race on merits. However, what made twenty twenty free so bad wasn't the fact that Verstappen was beating him. If you're within two tenths of Verstappen, I'd say that's pretty good. It was the fact he was struggling to make it to fucking Q3 in every qualifying session. On top of this, a lot of the time he would spend his race terrorising the midfield. For example, his generational run from Singapore to Japan to Qatar and also his start to the Mexican Grand Prix. Despite Perez's best efforts, he still somehow managed to finish in P2 in the driver's standings. This really is a testament to how fast the RB19 was. Anyway, let's talk about 2024 now. Perez started off the 2024 season by being mediocre, which wasn't terrible because the Red Bull was looking fast. Unfortunately for Perez, however, as soon as the other teams introduced upgrades and caught up, his gap to Verstappen was exposed again and he was struggling to make it to Q3 again. On a good day now, Perez can finish maybe in the top six, but most of the time he is getting pocketed by Nico Hülkenberg and this is causing Red Bull to bleed away points, allowing McLaren and Mercedes to catch up in the constructor standings. So if you had even a slight amount of critical thinking skills at this point, you'd think it would be a good idea to replace Perez. But, this leads on to why Red Bull are in a terrible situation. If you look at McLaren, Mercedes and Ferrari, they have undoubtedly the best driver lineups on the grid, and none of the teams really have a clear number one and two dynamic. You could argue Piastri and Norris might, but Piastri is still improving after every race, and is able to beat Norris regularly enough from weekend to weekend. My point is, at this particular point in the ground effect era and cost cap era, the front running cars are close in performance, and the first and second driver dynamic doesn't work anymore. It's fine when your car is dominant, but when it's as close as it is now, it doesn't. So in order to win the Constructors' Championship this year and next year, you need two alpha drivers which will consistently take points from the other teams because, as we have observed, Perez, a clear number two on a good day, is consistently finishing at the back of the top four teams. Another point about why Red Bull shouldn't hire a second driver is on the off chance Mercedes snatches Verstappen from Red Bull because if you were just left with a second driver and all the good drivers are locked under contract already, you will likely have to hire another second driver and then your team is actually finished. So so now that we have established that Red Bull can't hire another second driver, what drivers could potentially fall under this label? I don't know if this is controversial, but Sonoda and the Wash Ricardo we have now would fall into the second driver role with ease. And to be honest, I feel like they would be doing a similar job to what Perez is doing right now. I would like to be wrong about Ricardo, but I have not been convinced he can lock his 2014 to 2018 performance level again. As for Sonoda and Lawson, yes. Sonoda had a good start to the season and Lawson performed well under a short notice, particularly in Singapore. All these performances show to me is a capability to perform well in the midfield. A good midfield driver was what Perez used to be and it is what Bottas is, with Gasly and Albon proving to be handy in the midfield despite being dropped by Red Bull as well. Outside the Red Bull camp we have Hülkenberg, which I am a bit conflicted about. On the one hand he is one of the best qualifiers on the grid and one of Perez's main issues is qualifying into the correct position and avoiding trouble in the midfield. So Hülkenberg could solve this, but like with Sonoda or Lawson, I have this feeling that he could fall into the same fate as the 2019 to 2024 Red Bull drivers because he is decent in the midfield field, but driving in a front running car is a completely different situation. So who should Red Bull hire? Well, I have no clue, but if I were to pick someone available now, it would have to be Sainz, and I know Red Bull are scared of the two pensioners having a street fight, but if one of the most successful teams in F1 can't handle two OAPs, then it's just embarrassing. If I was Red Bull and I could pick anyone though, with um, like ignoring contracts completely, to be honest, I would try to steal Leclerc or Norris because they kind of get on with Verstappen 
and they they both sort of fit more into the alpha role than a number two role. I think this is enough for the video now. I think I've managed to stretch eight minutes out of just waffling and contributing nothing to this world apart from carbon dioxide. So um, goodbye.